integrity belong to the world. That excellence. Excellence in service. And that's what we want to consecrate you to. Because you have chosen that excellence in service. So he says, it is God who has given us, if you have this attitude that God through his mercy has given me what I am doing as a teacher, as an administrator, as a pastor, a department director, an accountant, a treasurer, whoever you are, you know that develop that attitude that what I've been given is by God's grace. And I must bring all excellence into the work. And not only has he appointed us into ministry, Again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 says, And he has made us as co-workers. He has said, you will work hand in hand with me. You will be here, I will be here. And we shall work together. As I teach you how to bring excellence in the work. So you are not working alone. That's the attitude we are talking about. And if you have the attitude that God has given you ministry by his grace, and he has said, I will just be working with you, showing you how to do this work, then at the end of it, whatever you have, whatever you do, you are going to bring excellence into service. And at the end of it all, then we shall hear what he's going to, to say. Actually, God says that he has given people certain competencies. And the competencies are actually called spiritual gifts. Those are the competencies. But again, if that research is true, the competencies without the attitude will account for only 60%. The talent you have. And I was reading a book by by Chris Wright, that missiologist from Britain, he said, actually, without the right attitude, the more talented you are, the more dangerous you are. Because you are going to use this thing here. Tell me of a talented treasurer who receives 50 million Kenya shillings per month and has no attitude of Jesus Christ, what that treasurer will do with the money. And I think Chris Wright is right by saying the more talented you are without the right attitude, the attitude of Jesus Christ, you, the more dangerous you are. But I know that you are going to combine the three factors that the HRM have given us. That of knowledge. Don't despise knowledge, even if it is 2%. Accumulate as much as you can. Read your books, read the Bible, read all these things. Go into your Greek and Hebrew. Those who are pastors, read. Those who are accountants here, go into all the accounting books and read. Even if it is 2%, read, accumulate. Because... Without it, you can't get 100%. Then identify the skills that God has given you, the competencies, the, the talents, and employ it. And over this, for it to make sense, have developed the attitude of Jesus Christ. Then all this will bring uh, what it is in the in the overall. And so that is why actually after people have done, we want you to see what Paul, who is the uh, 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 a preacher by excellence, who brought excellence into work. And if you read in his papers, you can see how, how thorough he was in his research, in his presentation with all the skill and putting there we want you, as you have said, to bring excellence in your preaching assignments. 
The Bible says, preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. Actually, we have, we have crammed John 3.16. And those of us who are pastors, I want to tell you pastors, leave John 3.16 for church members. And bring a new verse I'm going to give you. And the verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, which says, For we do not preach ourselves, but we preach Jesus Christ and us as his laborers. Can we bring excellence into preaching? When I say excellent preaching, I'm not asking you to arrange your sermon, but preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. With the right attitude. Let's bring that excellence to the pulpit here. Preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. Let's bring excellence in our administration and leadership. Because... There is a lot of mediocrity in our administration, church administration, and leadership. You are a conference president, a department director, a union president, a division president, and there's a lot of mediocrity around you. And you sanitize and even baptize mediocrity. No. What we want to say is despair mediocrity in administration and leadership with excellence. Because you say that is what it is. Another area is in our development and in infrastructure development. Let all our churches, all our clinics, all our um, uh, things that we have put up, structures we have put up for the Lord, even if it's a gate or a Petra tree or anything there, just be exuding excellence. Where even when people pass here, they say, who made this, did this gate? They say, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Praise be to the Lord. Excellence, even to the gate going into, your, into, your, into the compound of the church. I mean, let's, let's see, even if it's a Peter tree, not like the one we see in other places when it is raining, you must uh, uh, practice hope, step, and jump to get into the Peter tree. And when you get there, there's no door. It is some banana vipers that I put to, to do here, and some of them have been cut off. So you are exposed. No, that's mediocrity. That's bring excellence into putting even Peter latrines in such a way that somebody can have a meal in the latrine. Excellence. Let's bring excellence in our community relationships. Let's bring excellence in our institutions. It's a pity. When we sit on various boards, a board of a hospital that belongs to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. You are talking of uh, a hospital that owes 100 million Kenya shillings. What is the liquidity? Negative 70. <laughs> what is the working capital? Negative 200 and you are the chairman of that uh, hospital or a school. What did the students get here? That the best God has in minus. And you are the chair of that board. Now let's turn around. If you, are, if you are chairing a school, you are chairing a clinic, let us hear that that clinic that is the one which gives the best service in the country. Let even the government give you uh, a certificate of excellence. And you display there and you say, during my chairmanship of this clinic, 
we got this award by bringing excellence into the work. We want to see all this and when we have done this, let's hear what Paul says. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, says, So brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. And enthusiastically here has the element of excellence in it. Actually, the greatest excellence is meaning enthusiastically. So, brothers and sisters, be strong and be immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. He's coming with a reward in his, his hand. He says, behold, he's coming with a reward in his hand. Do you think he's going to give a reward to people who are, who are over at mediocre work? No way. That reward is for people who have brought excellence into the work. When God will say, well done, he's not going to pronounce well done on mediocrity. You can be sure. He's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. You have brought excellence in this work. Now you qualify. You can, I can put you in judge of more of this so that you keep bringing excellence. So dear graduates, the attitude of Jesus Christ. Bring excellence. Work for the Lord. Because you know at the end of it, there's going to be a reward. With these words and with the choice of who you are, you are this, I want to say, may the Lord bless your choices. So that when we are going to give a consecration prayer, we are going to say, these people, these men and women have chosen that the only word that can be seen from what they do from today on is excellence and nothing else. God bless you in Jesus' name. To the guests of honor, our guest speaker, Dr. Samuel Makore, the Vice Chancellor of AUA, the distinguished guests, lecturers, the graduates, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is our pleasure as the graduating class of 2018 to thank the Almighty God for enabling us to reach to this far end where we can now celebrate our victory. It is not by our own might nor power, but by the Lord's Spirit and glory to the living God. We, as the graduating class, wish to thank our professors, lecturers, thesis project advisors, and readers for their efforts and sacrifice that enable us to succeed in our academic undertakings at, AM, at MA levels. May God bless you abundantly. We realized that uh, it was not an easy walk to freedom. There is no success that comes without struggle and a bitter experience. One author once uh, wrote that no thorns 
no crown. During our study, we passed through difficult experiences. One of them, sleepless nights to beat the deadlines. Presentations in class or lecture halls. Exams. Some of them were very frustrating, full of disappointments that could have uh, made some of us to give up. But with a strong determination, we have managed to succeed by God's grace. Bravo to the graduates. Tonight, as we celebrate this victory, we can unitedly say, as uh, President Barack Obama once said, that yes, we can. Yes, we can. What do you say about that? Our confidence was built on what the Bible says. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Again, individually we can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We want to thank uh, Dr. Samuel McCory for those wonderful uh, message that he has given unto us. And we want to thank him for uh, the great sacrifice that he has made to take a ride on a, a motorcycle to this particular place so that we could hear those wonderful messages. What do you say about that? Thank you very much, Dr. McCory. Our theme is excellence in service. As the graduating class 2018, in this seventh commencement AUA, we have resolved that we will settle for nothing less but the best in God's service. To give our best to God is our first priority. We will not uh, be party to a mediocre service. But with the prayer, we shall lift uh, Christ up. And we know that uh, by our sermons, as you have challenged us, we lift Jesus Christ up. Winston Churchill once said, We make a living by what we get. But we make a life by what we give. So to us, as uh, the graduates, we are going to give our best to the Lord. The church today is faced with a lot of challenges, not from outside, but by the despiritualizing process of pride and ambitions. Power positions are sought and retained not so much for service, but for influence, recognition, and esteem. Ministry today focuses on personal ambition rather than service and mission. We call to ministry, the call to ministry becomes call to seek power positions instead of a call to pastoral service. We, the, uh, the graduates, have resolved that uh, we will follow the biblical servant leadership model of Christ. We will imitate Christ Jesus in service and everything, as you challenge us that we will work as Christ worked. And also, we'd like to challenge our church, that uh, social justice is the ethical responsibility of the church. We realize that it is important for us to participate in that. From the spirit of prophecy says, the strongest argument in favor of the gospel is a loving and lovable Christian. We'll uh, demonstrate that love that Christ gave to the world in our service. 
the things that uh, the 2018 class resolved to strive for, as they were taught and influenced by the Adventist University of Africa, which is well known as one of the best learning and scholarly institutions in the world today, are as follows. One of them is integrity, honesty, modesty, morality, and spirituality. Lack of, uh, lack of integrity, dishonesty, corruption, selfishness, injustices, and all kinds of prejudices are some of the things that have uh, constantly bedeviled most of the countries in the world. Our church inst institutions, as well as our church organizations. As the graduates, we are going to be men and ladies of high integrity dedicated for the service of the Lord. What do you say about that? Our motto is pressing forward. As the graduates 2018 class, remember that heaven is our goal. This is the expression of our aims or ideals in life. As Mrs. White once wrote in her book, Education, page 18, that higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideal for his children, for his children. Godliness and godlikeness is the goal to be reached. Therefore, as Paul wrote in the book of uh, Philippians, chapter 3, verse 13, 12 to 14, this text distinctively and laboriously expresses our class motto, pressing on towards the goal. From the New International Version, it reads, Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but uh, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have uh, taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and uh, straining forward for what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Lastly, our deepest appreciation goes to our church organizations, our fields, conferences, unions, and general conference where divisions falls for supporting our education in, the, in this institution and making Adventist University of Africa as a pillar of scholarly excellence in Africa. I want to thank our church organizations for supporting us. And as we stand here as the graduates, we are grateful for all those who supported us and who has made us to reach this far end. And therefore, to this end, may the name of the Lord be glorified for everything. And I know that uh, after this, Dr. Macquarie, Samuel, you will challenge us that we are going to use our knowledge, skills, and attitude for the work of the Lord. And therefore, it's my prayer that the Lord uh, may help us that we may have the attitude that we, which was in Christ Jesus so that uh, we may glorify his name in everything. May God bless all of you together. Good evening. It's time for the <coughs> consecration prayer. I would like to invite the Prospective graduates, they are still prospective until Sunday, eh? so please stand. And as you stand, I would like to turn to 567 SDH before we take our prayer. I, I want you to 
meditate on the words, but we will just recite the first stanza together, and then we will pray. Have thy own way, Lord, have thy own way. I'm sure you know it. Can we go on with it? Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art thy porter, I am thy clay. Mold me and make me after thy will, while I am yielded, waiting, yielded, and still. We do pray that the Lord will empower us further as we continue in the assignment that he has called us. I would like you to bow. We just take the first stanza as we as we are led. Then we will pray. That's the first stanza. God, this evening again, we stand here as testimony of your grace and leading. There are daughters and sons who were enrolled here some years back have gone this journey by faith. And this weekend, O oh Lord, officially at this level of study marks the end of their stay in this institution. They have acquired experiences, they have acquired knowledge, they have acquired skills, they have acquired attitude. But much more, you have given us a task that we cannot do on our own, except each day you lead us by your hand. And so, Lord, this evening, even as we have sung, we are inviting you to have your own way in their lives. We're inviting you that you, who is the potter, and we the clay, we submit to you. We're inviting you, O Lord, that you mold them and make them after your will. And we invite you, O Lord, that they will be waiting, yielded and still. And so, Lord, we consecrate them to you. We consecrate them to you for salvation of their personal lives. We consecrate them to you for service in ministry in the various aspects that you call them to. We consecrate them to you for the health of the community where they lead. We consecrate them to you, O oh Lord, for healthy family lives. We consecrate them to you, O oh Lord, even for excellence. And Lord, we pray that as they walk this life until you come, may your presence dwell in them. Thank you for hearing our prayer this evening. And we know, Lord, that by your grace, through their ministries, many more will be called to your kingdom. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll join the graduating class this evening. Let's all rise with song 330.
Holy Father, one more time, one more time, we are bringing to you the purest gold of thankfulness, the most precious jewels of gratitude, and the most choicest praises to you. Because, O oh Lord, the past, the present, the future, the Sabbath, the graduation, all is blended in one great truth. O oh Lord, how can we ever, ever thank you for this grand moment? You have been so good to each one of your sons and daughters. Their dreams have been fulfilled. More, many turbulent rivers crossed. Their goals reached. Prayers answered. Victories won. New insights gained. New experiences experienced. And new challenges are waiting for them. O oh Lord. And as we just now were singing, praying, calling upon you, supplicating, take our life. That was our call upon you, O oh God. But we want to thank you that it is not the call only without echo, because you have said that all the promises in Jesus Christ are yes and amen to the glory of God. And we want to thank you that when you are going to take our lives, and especially the lives of the graduates, they will need, and we will need, new strengths. And you have promised yes. We will need new inspiration, and courage, and perseverance, and insights, and love. And you have promised yes and amen, O oh Lord. Please, bless each one of the graduates and each one who is here according to your special plan for each one, according to your special purpose for each one, according to the special circumstances, according to special needs of each heart, and of course, according to your yes and amen to all promises in Jesus Christ for your glory. Amen. We'll keep singing the first stanza of the same song as uh, the musical interlude and the chairperson of the evening takes it on. Take my life and let it be Thank you very much. We thank God for the program this uh, evening. Uh, there is a telephone that is uh, lost here, cell phone, I mean, Samsung Dios. Uh, if it is yours, please come and uh, pick it uh, from me. Uh, <coughs> the picture taken especially for tomorrow and uh, Sunday. We have official photographers. Uh, we uh, have them here, and no one is allowed to move around. If you want to take a picture, please do it from where you are, but don't stand, because uh, sometimes uh, that uh, disturbs uh, 